It's a mystery as Canadian as it gets. It is definitely the oldest known stick that's ever been discovered. But the stick's history remains a secret. Wow. I would just love to know where it was made and who made it. Linda Howey and her colleagues are determined to find that out. Ooh. <laughs> okay, there you go. Today, they're looking for microscopic clues that may reveal the story of this mysterious stick. Um, we can see here that there's definitely, look at that. There is remnants yeah, of there's, something There's in residue there. Yeah. in there. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. it is, yep. This could change the history of hockey and the story of Canada. Score again, keeping up that blistering. My name is Dr. Linda Howey and I'm an archaeologist. I specialize in the scientific analysis of ancient artifacts. Linda has been obsessed with the stick and its story from the moment she got her hands on it. A client called and asked me to corroborate the early dates for two very old hockey sticks. You know, every time I open this case, I still get excited about what's inside. I was amazed. One stick dates back to the late 1700s. We know that it's the earliest known hockey stick because it has been carbon dated and the date came back that it was 1776 plus or minus 20 years. That date was determined by the world's first forensic investigation on a hockey stick. An investigation that led to a surprising discovery. Oh, wow. Look, right there. See it? Mm -hmm. Holy cow. We came across a stamp on the stick. It was only visible with UV light. And the shape of the stamp suggested that it might be a shield shape, which suggests a connection to the British military. Linda's priority now, get a closer look at the stamp and learn more about how the stick was made. Our goal now is to investigate if indeed there is a British military connection. She starts with a high-powered microscope. We're traveling from the bottom to the top of the stamp right now. We can see clearly that it is something that's stained in there. Okay, so look at that right there. Wow. Okay? You can see clearly here that it has this crown-like yeah. top on it. So definitely we're looking at something shield shirt. And Incredible. see, look at that. Then she notices something else. Oh, see how it disappears? Yeah, yeah, it's not a flaw, it's writing. We saw immediately that there was some writing at the top of the shield. They're subtle engravings, and so it's the remnants of somebody, you know, writing something on there, probably with a sharp implement enough to leave behind a scar. We also know from looking at the stick and taking photos that there's not only just one piece of writing, but potentially multiple areas where there's writing on the stick. And then another discovery. Now, since as we were looking at the end of the blade itself and just exploring around, we found, lo and behold, a red thread and a yellow thread. Oh, oh wow. Look at that. Okay. See that? Like, those are red and yellow fibers. Uh -huh. They look like it's probably fabric. And guess what? The British military wore red and yellow uniforms in the late 1700s. It's interesting because it could tell us a lot about the identity of the person that used the stick. The hockey stick is now handed over to master carpenter, Chris McCaskill. If there is anybody that knows anything about the history of woodworking, it's him. He's passionate about it. Chris carefully examines every tool mark on the stick. He had created a map of the stick so that he could guide me through his observations. So, what can you tell me about the stick? Uh, wow, I, um, as an artifact, I love this thing. It is just amazing. Look at that big divot there. Yes, um, yes. I see a variety of hand tool techniques that aren't commonly used today, and then some really interesting machine marks. So these are machine tools? These are machine tools, yep, for um, sure, absolutely. The machine marks throw a curve into Linda's theory that the stick was made by hand hundreds of years ago. Sort of rough. Um... When he was talking about machine tools, I my heart sank and I wanted to cry. You're thinking, oh, maybe I'm wrong. But then you get over the panic of, okay, there's machine marks on it, but that doesn't mean it was made in the 1930s. And then you start listening to what he has to say. According to Chris, the British Navy did use simple machines in the 1700s. 
The machinery that's indicated on the stick is consistent with shipbuilding. And the biggest shipbuilding from a few hundred years ago would have been coming out of the British Empire. It meant that we weren't wrong. It was definitely a huge relief to discover that. For Linda, it's more evidence that the British military played a critical role in this Canadian game, even if few fans are aware of it. The investigation of the stick obviously is going to continue. We know that there's a stamp on there, but there's evidence of other writing. How extensive is this writing? What does it have to say about the person that owned the stick? The beautiful thing is that we're not just learning about the early years of hockey, but we're learning about ourselves.